15.2b, adding with simplifying. Before adding radicals together, we must simplify inside the radical. So let's first start by looking at example one. Here's example one. To simplify inside each of these radicals, it may be helpful to find the number's prime factorization. Fifty is five and ten and five and two. This means inside it is two times five squared x. Next is twenty-seven. Twenty-seven is three and nine and three and three. This means that inside it is three to the third. The next one is already simplified, so we just write it down. One hundred eight is two and fifty-four. Two and twenty-seven, three and nine, and three and three. This gives us two squared and three cubed. Now let's simplify each of these. In this first one, we have a five that's already on the outside, but an additional five comes out leaving two x inside. In the second one, we have a five on the outside and a three comes out with a three staying in. Remember, to determine how many comes out, you do the exponent divided by the index or three divided by two to have one come out with one remaining inside. The next term is already simplified and then the final term has a two on the outside where we have two squared on the inside, which means a two comes out and none are left in, a three cubed, which means a three comes out with a three left in. Now we must multiply the numbers that are out front of each of these radicals. This gives us twenty-five root two x plus fifteen root three minus three root two x minus two times two is four times three is twelve root three. Now we must combine each of these that is similar. This one has a two x inside of its radical. So does this one. Next, this one has a square root of three and so does this one. We can now co combine like radicals. Twenty-five square root two x minus three square root two x becomes twenty-two square root two x. The fifteen root three minus twelve root three becomes a positive three root three. This gives us our final answer. Let's look at another example in example two. Here's example two. As you can see, there are large numbers inside each radical. So first to decide how to simplify each of these, we will find the prime factorization of each of these numbers. Eighty-one is nine times nine, which can be reduced to three and three and three and three, which means we have the cubed root of three to the fourth, x to the third, y. In the next term, we have negative three y on the outside and then we need to find the prime factorization of thirty-two, which would be two and sixteen, two and eight, two and four, and two and two. So this makes it the cubed root of two to the fifth x to the second. Next, we have an x on the outside and then we have twenty-four on the inside, so let's find its prime factorization, which gives us the cubed root of two to the third times three times y. The last term has five hundred, 
which is five times one hundred, which is five times twenty, which is five times four, which is two and two. This gives us the cubed root of two squared times five cubed, x squared y cubed. Now we need to simplify each of these radicals. Remember, we do this by taking the exponent and dividing it by the index. Four divided by three gives us a three that comes out and a three that stays in. Next, we have x to the third, which means an x comes out and there are no x's left over. Finally, the y stays in. And remember, we must bring down the cubed root. Let's do the next one. We have negative three y outside. Now we have two to the fifth, which means that one two comes out and two two stay in. Also, the x squared will stay in and bring down the cubed root. Next, we have two to the third, so a two comes out and there are no two left inside. The three and the y are both exponents of one, so they stay in. And with the last term, we have two squared, so neither of these come out. Five to the third, so we have one five come out with none staying in. X squared means they both stay in, and y cubed means that one y comes out. And there are none left inside. Now, we must multiply anything that is out front of each of these radicals. The first radical is three x with the cubed root of three y. Next, we have a three and a two, so we have a negative six y. Cubed root of two squared, which means it's four x squared. Next, we have an x and a two, which gives us two x. Cubed root of three y. Next, we have negative five y with the cubed root of four x squared. Now we need to find which of these terms are similar. As you can see, we now don't, we now not only have to match what's inside the radical, but also if there are any variables outside of the radical. In this first one, we have an x on the outside and three the cubed root of three y, which means we need to find if there's something else that has an x with the cubed root of three y. We see in the third term, we also have x cubed root of three y. This means these are similar terms. The second one, we need to find a y and also a cubed root of four x squared. In the last term, we see that there's a y and also a cubed root of four x squared. This means these two are also similar terms. Now let's combine these common terms. The three x and the two x cubed root of three y's become five x cubed root of three y. As you can see, I kept the portion that was similar exactly the same and only added how many of them I had. Let's do the same with those highlighted in blue. Negative six and negative five become a negative eleven y cubed root of four x squared. Remember, when you are combining the like radicals, you not only have to match variables on the outside of the radical, but also whatever is inside the radical, and then simply add the numbers in the front.